Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, Hepatocellular Carcinoma in Children, Does Modified Platin and Doxorubicin-Based Chemotherapy Increase Resectability and Change Outcome? by Morawski et al. My name is Howard Katzenstein, and I'm a professor of pediatrics and medical director of the Division of Pediatric Hematology Oncology at Vanderbilt University and the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. My oncologic specialty is in pediatric liver cancers. Dr. Allison O'Neill assisted in the preparation of this podcast. Hepatocellular carcinoma, referred to herein as HCC, is the second most common pediatric liver tumor typically affecting children over the age of 10. Unlike HEC in adults, most pediatric HEC does not occur in the context of prior hepatitis B infection or pre-existing cirrhotic liver disease. It has long been debated whether HEC in pediatrics is the same as in adults. While there is some controversy regarding this issue, most pediatric oncologists believe HEC in children is a different entity with unique tumor biology warranting different therapeutic approaches. Survival for HCC has not changed much over the last several decades and has ranged from 20 to 30 percent and is largely dependent upon surgical resectability and a lack of metastatic disease. Unfortunately, only about 20 percent of HCC patients have localized liver tumors that can be resected at diagnosis. To this point in time, the rarity of HCC in the pediatric age group has prevented clinical trials solely for HCC. The majority of HEC clinical trial reports from North America, as well as Europe and Japan, have reflected the treatment of pediatric HEC patients included on trials designed for the most common pediatric liver tumor, hepatoblastoma. Hepatoblastoma similarly requires surgical resection for curative potential, and the minority of these patients have resectable lesions at diagnosis. However, patients with unresectable hepatoblastoma at diagnosis can achieve resection in up to two-thirds of cases with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. In contrast, while previous studies have reported up to a 40% response rate of pediatric HCC cases to similar neoadjuvant chemotherapy regimens, these responses do not typically equate to the same resectability rates seen in hepatoblastoma. The Siapel International Pediatric Liver Group included HCC patients in three previous trials, Siapel 1, 2, and 3. The results of Siapel 1 were previously published. Siapel 2 and 3, the focus of this report, were aimed at intensifying therapy with cisplatin, doxorubicin, and carboplatin. Cisplatin and doxorubicin are identified as the two most active agents in hepatoblastoma. Carboplatin has also been utilized to try and exploit platin efficacy while minimizing late effects. The Siapel 2 and 3 trials were consecutively opened from 1995 to 2006, enrolling 90 total patients over the two studies at a rate of approximately 9 patients per year. 85 patients were eligible for analysis. Both protocols utilize the super plato regimen for HCC patients, with cisplatin given continuously over 24 hours, alternating every two weeks with doxorubicin given continuously over 48 hours, and carboplatin given over an hour. If unresectable, patients could receive additional cycles of chemotherapy. Patients enrolled in the CIPL3 protocol were eligible for liver transplant if their disease was non-metastatic and demonstrated continued response despite being unresectable. The main objective of these protocols was to determine whether intensive chemotherapy could improve the response rate and surgical resectability of patients compared with results observed on CIPL1. A response for these trials was very modest and was defined as any tumor shrinkage or any AFP decline. There was no central review of pathology or images. The median age of diagnosis was 12 years of age, with a range of 2 to 17 years, with a slight male predominance of patients enrolled. The median AFP level at diagnosis was 816, with a range of 1 to 1.8 million. Five patients had pretex 1 disease, 28 tumors were pretex 2, 20 lesions were pretex 3, and pretex 4 was seen in 30 patients. 30 patients had metastatic disease.
12 patients had a complete resection at diagnosis, which is consistent with historical data. 22 patients underwent a delayed attempt at a complete resection with either complete removal of the tumor in 15 or transplant in 7. Another 11 patients had a delayed surgery that did not result in removal of all tumor. Patients received a median of six cycles of neoadjuvant chemotherapy with a range of 1 to 14. Only 18 patients received exactly seven pre-op cycles, which was the study design. 40% of patients demonstrated a response to chemotherapy as previously defined. Results were somewhat different from previous studies. Among patients undergoing primary tumor resection, only two-thirds, 8 of 12, survived despite complete resection. While numbers are small, these patients fared poorly when compared with previous studies. Delayed resection following chemotherapy was similar to previous CIAPEL studies, but better than some previous children's oncology group studies, even with the exclusion of liver transplant. However, fewer delayed surgeries yielded complete resection. Of those with a complete resection, only 40% survived. This is in stark contrast to hepatoblastoma, which has equivalent results for patients with non-metastatic disease, regardless of the timing of surgery. Even more surprising, only one of seven patients who underwent liver transplantation did not have an event. Again, this is quite different than what has been observed in hepatoblastoma, in which patients who receive liver transplant have a similar prognosis to those who have tumors that can be resected without transplant. Postoperative chemotherapy was given to 25 patients who had any type of delayed resection, with a range of 1 to 10 cycles. The five-year overall survival for the entire group was 22%. No toxicity data were provided. The results of the CIAPEL 2 and 3 trials are a little difficult to interpret. What remains clear is that conventional chemotherapeutics continue to result in dismal outcomes for children with HEC. This is despite a 40% response rate to chemotherapy and the administration of a median six preoperative and three postoperative cycles. A delay in surgical resection may have allowed for the in vivo development of resistance and or metastatic spread. No information was provided on the management of metastatic disease or sites of recurrence. The poor outcome of patients who underwent liver transplant is also very disappointing. Pediatric oncologists have argued that criteria for transplant should be pediatric specific and should not be based on adult criteria such as those put forth by investigators from Milan. Details on the seven transplanted patients and their time to transplant was not provided. So what do these studies tell us and how do they guide us for the future? First and foremost, a pediatric trial specifically designed for HCC patients is needed to try and make some progress in this terrible disease. The current chemotherapy drugs have yielded poor results, and therefore new drugs and strategies are desperately in need. A more comprehensive understanding of HCC tumor biology in pediatric patients will be important towards developing new treatment approaches. Timing of surgery should be critically evaluated to determine if an earlier resection might prove better results, and specific criteria guiding pediatric HCC transplants needs to be developed. While the results here are poor, a prospective trial including liver transplant based on prior results seems warranted. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.